Bravo, bravo. Ladies and gentlemen, the sparrow. My dear friends, thank you for gracing my humble home with your presence. I'm so glad we could share this very special evening together. Some refreshments to see you home. I hope you aren't trying to sneak away without saying goodnight. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. I wanted to find you so that I might convey my personal appreciation. No, my dear Bard. The honor is mine, that you grace my house with your talents. I have a certain reputation to uphold, expectations to meet around these little soirees. My guests demand the new, the interesting, the next big thing. Your performance this evening has not disappointed them. Or me. I know it's late, but there is a matter I hoped to discuss with you this evening. A commission of sorts, one might say. And another matter of a more personal nature. I must see my guests out, but I hope you'll stay and join me for a nightcap. Wonderful. Bernard here will see you to my private library, where you can refresh yourself. Bernard, don't let our guest get away. Ah, you've found the orrery. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my dear Sparrow. I can't seem to stop taking you by surprise. I suppose I do move rather quietly. Old habits. I hope I haven't kept you waiting so long that you'd forgotten all about me. <laughs> Such a smooth talker, even by a bard's standards. Yes, this contraption you found is my orrery. I must admit, I'd never thought to use it as a musical instrument before. Trust a bard to make music from anything. No, few people have seen its like. You've heard of the great inventor, Anna of Nandamas, yes? Oh, it's more than her design. It's her work. Still working as flawlessly as the day she put it in... Uh, in the hands of my house. What do I use it for? Let me show you. If I may just borrow your hand. Don't worry. I'll take good care of it. Here now. Slide your fingers here. Along the base. There. You feel that? Press that switch and... And there we are. That's exactly right. It's the movement of the heavens above our planet. The rose gold orb with the sapphires is Ramos. The 
silver and white gold are Shima and Dida, respectively. All playing out for us on my library table. Hide it away in a vault. I could never. This isn't mere coin or soulless bars of metal. This is a masterwork. Its very nature demands that it be seen, showcased, admired. And I've always believed it's a sin to use something against its nature. Oh, you must go. Nandamas is full of wonders. A very mathematical people. I find it fascinating to compare their work to that of the geometric patterns of Vesi. The same ideas developed in such different ways. You've seen the Temple to Ra, of course. You haven't been to Vesey either. Never. You can't mean that literally. You've never been outside this city. It does astonish me, Sparrow. I listen to your songs and I hear such a sense of style, of musical complexity hidden in simple chords. Far outside the bounds of what anyone else in this city is doing. And your lyrics. So far beyond your years. How you could write to the heart of a feeling. Write to the heart of a truth. I am not being too kind. I am being accurate in my assessment of your talent. You're not insulting my taste, are you? Good. No, I'm not disappointed. I'm excited. I must admit, I was wondering if the whole street-born, voice-of-the-people bit was a put-on. But it's not, is it? You aren't some music student playing a character. You really are a natural talent, guided by nothing but your own genius. You cannot compare yourself as you are now to Anna at the height of her training and abilities. No, no. I think you must travel as soon as you can. You need exposure to bring your work to the world and to bring the world to you. You must start in Pelton and learn the Dorian scale. Oh. I cannot wait to hear an augmented fourth in a sparrow song. Take your leave. You can't leave. We're just getting... Oh. oh, dear. I see I've gotten rather ahead of myself. I do come on a bit strong sometimes. All right. Far too strong. Apologies. Of course you may leave Sparrow, if that is what you wish. But... May I beg your indulgence for f five more minutes? There is the matter of the commission, and that other personal thing. But first... There's something in my gallery I'd very much like to show you. Marvelous. Please. This way, but... Hmm. 
You see, I am, by nature, an acquisitive personality. Are you teasing me, Sparrow? You'd better look out. I do appreciate a bit of cheek. Yes, fine. It's very obvious that I like collecting things. I have something of a taste. Perhaps one might say, a hunger for beauty. My gallery is where I keep the very best prizes. Well, there are a few sculptures, but yes, it's mostly jewelry. I've never cared as much for oils and watercolor. Pigments fade, canvas cracks, but these... Precious metals and gems, made even more precious by the hands that shaped them into art. Like a song, these are works that last your time. This parure is done in the traditional river people style. The stone's a mix of shapes to suggest leaves on a vine, curling about the wearer's neck and arms. It practically looks alive, don't you think? The tiara over here from a Vesite artisan. Seed pearls and pure jadeite beads in ten shades of red, woven on platinum wires to create that astonishing architectural effect. Almost hypnotic, isn't it? Oh, but this. A necklace. This is what I wanted to show you. That pink stone in the center is one of the largest diamonds in the world. I happened to be there on the day it was pulled from the earth. But it didn't sing until I brought it to the jeweler to the Queen of the Phoenixes. They told me it would take them months to do such a stone justice. I engaged them for three years. When I returned, they had created this. The perfect cut to show off that star. Set in this asymmetrical cascade of arthurite stones that hide the sculptural element. What sculptural element indeed? A clever little trick from the jeweler. You see, arthurite changes color when heated by the touch of warm skin. It's invisible now where it sits on cold velvet. Someone has to be wearing it to reveal the mystery. So, let's get this on you. What an interesting protest, my dear bard. It is certainly not too fine for you. In fact, I insist. Just a few seconds, Sparrow. Don't you want to see the secret the Phoenix Jeweler hid? Good. Let me loosen your shirt collar a bit here to make space. 
It needs the warmth of your skin. Oh. You are quite warm to the touch, aren't you? Hmm, and getting warmer by the second. That blush is adorable. Don't hide your face, bud. You teased me. You'll see I can tease right back. <sighs> Let's get this properly settled around your neck. I'll center that stone right here. Just beneath the hollow of your throat. There, now. Come to the mirror, my dear. Right here. Now. Open your eyes. Uh-uh. Hands down. Don't touch. You've nothing to be shy about. It looks amazing on you. I knew it would. Straighten your shoulders and squint your eyes a bit as the arthrite warms to you. There. Can you see it? Exactly right, clever bard. It's a dragon. Curved around the neck and plunging down to capture the pink diamond in its jaw. Cheeky phoenix. I didn't even realize what they'd done until I was far away. I'd have tipped them more. Why was that cheeky? Ah, <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. I've been too slow in coming to the point. Cheeky. Because it reveals... The truth. I am a dragon. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't run. Think. I didn't invite you into my house and drape you in jewels to eat you, my little wild sparrow. Breathe for me. There, now. Good. It seems once again I must apologize for startling you. Frankly, I didn't expect you to believe me quite so fast. Did I give something away? My footfalls were too quiet. Oh well, yes, that makes sense. Some people have a certain natural resistance to illusion magics. You and your gift for truth. You can sense it, can't you? That corner of the eye feeling that something isn't quite right with my size. And of course it would be the sound that you are sensitive to. Sparrow, are you all right? Oh, dear. Let's get you a little air. Here. The bower has the most comfortable seat in the garden. Let's get these pillows behind your back. Now, ask me your questions. <laughs> ask me one at a time. <laughs> well, as the poet said, we're only mostly dead. 
those of us dragons clever enough to adapt to the new human societies. Well, I can't speak for any dragon but myself, but I personally am doing quite all right. It was actually that hunger for beauty that saved me from the fate of my less temperate kin. It is no secret that my kind has certain acquisitive urges. As that urge develops, so too does the instinct to specialize, to fixate on a particular theme as we shape our horde. And it turns out, great works of art and beauty are rather scarce on the ground. Many were the raids in my younger days that left me with nothing but stacks of oily coin and plain goods I cared not for. As I grew older and more cunning, I mastered transmogrification and used it to scout ahead into the towns and caravans I planned to rob. And on one of those trips, a little artificer caught me staring in the window of his shop and challenged me to buy something or leave. I was stung. I pointed to the most expensive thing in the window, a silver lockbox set with emeralds, and asked if he had it larger and in blue. He said the words that changed my life. I've got the stones if you've got the dough, friend. Half commission up front and you can pick it up in a week. I nearly fell over on the spot. I was awash in coin and bullion I cared not for. And this blessed man had just given me the alchemical recipe to transform it to the thing I desired most in all the world. It was an odd feeling the first time I opened my fist and willingly let slip a part of my hoard, small as that purse was. But, oh, when my little artificer put that sapphire lockbox in my hands, I spent more and more time in my humanoid forms. My hoard grew exponentially. A word I learned from my new human friends. I discovered entire genres of beautiful things that racked me with joy. Intangible things I'd never dreamed of as a young reptile raising myself in a cave. Literature. Mathematics. Music the international banking system, and a little thing called compound interest. When the new breed of dragon hunters arose and came looking for me, my lair was long empty, and there was no great beast to be found. There was only a prosperous titan of commerce, with impressive financial reserves, an opulent home, and a perfectly respectable mania for art collecting. Now, the beauty walks itself to my doorstep and offers itself up, with so many would-be friends courting my attention and my money with gifts, suggestions, and tips on this new sculptor or that new painter. 
but I must confess, Sparrow. The hunt is still what gives me the most pleasure in life. And when I find someone like you, a raw and uncut gem emerging from the most unlikely cracks in the earth, I must make my investment and see what kind of great work I receive back. You're shivering. May I put my arms around you? This is my commission, Sparrow. Travel. Wherever you like, train and study anything you want. I will fund you now and give you letters of credit to draw more whenever you need. In return, you will perform your songs around the world. Let them spread. A year and a day after you leave this city, you will come back to me here and you will sing me something beautiful and true. Anything you like. I find I get my most interesting results when I leave it to the artist's discretion. We'll get to the other thing. First, my commission. Do you accept my terms? Wonderful. Bernard will make the arrangements in the morning, put together some maps, names, other resources. You may leave as soon as you desire. Now that our business is settled, yes, there is that other personal matter to discuss. Those clever hands and expressive eyes and this one soft skin. I have bargained for my song. Now, I would have you too. For as long as you will have me. Oh, my sweet sparrow, I told you, it's a sin to use something against their nature. Do you think I don't know a wild bird when I see one? I will not cage you. You may leave as soon as you wish. But for tonight, yes, if you will have me, my free little bird, 
Let me possess you tonight before you fly away from me in the morning. Good. So good. Tilt back your head. Let me have the hollow of your throat. You taste divine. <sighs> now, Sparrow, tell me everything.